In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use rigid body keyframes. Rigid body keyframes let you add additional animation to your rigid body simulations. Um, to begin, I suggest you download the scene I have loaded in Maya right now. You should be able to find a link to a zip containing the file somewhere on the web page of viewing this video. Now let's talk about rigid body keyframes. We have two different types. We have set active keyframes and we have set passive keyframes. Set passive keyframes walk very similarly to what normal keyframes walk like and a set active keyframe is more of an activation keyframe and it activates a dynamic simulation of the item that you're keyframing. Hope that made sense. So let's set up our quick little simulation here. I'm going to select our bricks and turn them into active rigid bodies so they can be affected by our passive object going to under dynamics menu set soft slash create rigid bodies create active rigid body then I click on the options and in here I'm going to reset the settings I strongly urge whenever you're doing any sort of rigid body simulation reset your settings freeze your transformations delete all history ahead of time it will cause you hours of headache I mean save you hours of headache now click create and now I'm going to select our plane down here our floor plane and make this a passive rigid body. Now just in case you don't know, a active rigid body is affected by the dynamic simulation calculations in Maya. A passive rigid body on the other hand affects the simulation but can't be affected by the simulation. So bricks can fall on this floor but the floor will not move or be affected by the bricks falling on it as long as it's a passive rigid body. I create a passive rigid body by going to the same place I created my active rigid body. Create passive rigid body, open up the settings, reset, and click create. So now that that's done, we need to add some gravity so these bricks do something. Without gravity, we have no forces applying to them, and they'll basically simply sit there and hover in space. So I will select our bricks. I want to deselect our floor plane. I only need gravity on the bricks. Go to fields and select gravity. I already have reset gravity settings. Now I'm going to add some more frames to our animation. Figure about, oh, we'll call add 300. That should be enough. And I'm going to play our animation just a couple of frames. We, all we want to happen is our bricks to settle a bit. If you notice, so drop down, move a bit, bounce a tiny bit. Okay, so now our bricks have settled gravity's pulled them down, all sitting on the floor plane, all sitting on top of each other. And that's how we want our animation to start. We don't want that sudden drop at the beginning of our animation. So I'm going to go to Solvers, Set Initial State, and Set for Selected. First I need to select them actually. So I'll select our bricks, then go to Solver, Initial State, Set for Selected. Now when we rewind our video, I mean our animation, the bricks will not move and when we play our animation they will not drop because they've already been dropped. Now then let's do our first passive animation. I'll show you how to do a passive to rigid animation next. We select this cylinder here and create a passive rigid body. Again a passive rigid body can affect a simulation but can't be affected by a simulation. Now I'm going to go to again soft slash rigid bodies and click set passive key so now it's set a passive key this works just like a normal keyframe and I'm going to jump ahead a couple frames I figure a frame oh frame 46 should be good and I will move our cube through our wall you know this won't no blocks will be affected when you're not um, playing back the animation and set another passive key this works just like keyframes. Go back to the first frame and play our animation. As you can see, the cylinder goes straight through and destroys our wall. The cylinder is not affected at all when it hits the wall. It just plows right through it. It does not decrease in speed. It is not affected whatsoever. But let's say that wasn't what we are going for. I'm going to leave our cube selected, delete its keys, 
and now I'm going to have it affected when it hits the wall. So I'm going to once again go to set passive key. I'm going to go up to about frame frame 18 should be good and I'm moving it right just up to where it hits about just about ready to hit the wall. We want a bit of a gap but not much. And I'm going to set another pa uh, passive key. And here's where things get interesting. I'm going to move up one frame. Right now I'm on frame 18. I'm going to go to frame 19. And I'm going to set an active key. This turns it into an active rigid body. That means it will be affected by the simulation. So when it hits the brick wall, it will be affected by hitting the brick wall. So now when we play our animation, I see it sort of bounces off and you notice it seems to be sort of floating. Well that's because gravity was never applied to it. We only applied gravity to our bricks. So to apply gravity to our cylinder, I'm going to go to Window, Relationship Editors, and I'm going to go to Dynamic Relationships. And now, with our cylinder still selected, I simply click Gravity on the right hand side of this Dynamics um, Relationships window. You'll notice the field is co colored now in a light yellow. It's hard to see, but it's a faint yellowish hue around it, clarifying that the cylinder is now connected to gravity. Now when we play our animation, hits the wall, and drops down. Um, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial, but just to make this effect a little bit more impressive, I'm going to increase the mass of our cylinder. And you'll notice when we open up the attributes editor and we're on frame 1, we can't increase the mass. That's because at this point it is still a passive rigid body which doesn't have any mass because it isn't affected by anything. I have to play the animation up until it becomes an active rigid body, which is any time past frame 19, to change its mass attribute. I'm going to set it to have a mass of... Now eh, we'll give it a mass of 20 which is actually equivalent to about the mass of 20 cubes. So actually that might be too much. Let's give it a mass of 13. Play the animation. And it kind of smashes through the wall, drops down. There you go. Simple, passive, and active keyframe animation in Maya. Thanks for watching this tutorial.